All right, welcome to the third chapter of Pre-Calc. Um, we are in chapter three, inequalities. Um, the first section is inequalities with one variable only. And we're going to talk a little bit about absolute value at the very end. Okay, so don't, don't forget that absolute values are these symbols here. The less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. Okay, so hopefully you remember that. The objective of the section is to solve and graph one variable inequalities and absolute values. This shouldn't be too hard. Most of this is, is review. Um, it, we will get to some harder stuff, but right now we're going to stick with a little bit of review. So let's please remember, okay, let's, let's look at a couple things here. Is 3 greater than 2? Hopefully you know that that is a true statement. Okay, so what we're going to do over to the right here is we're going to do a few things to it. What happens if I add 3 to both sides of my original? I mean, I still have 3 is greater than 2, but what happens if I add 3 to both sides? Is 6 greater than 5? Hopefully you see that that's still true. Okay, okay now that's the first thing. The second thing, let's subtract 3 from both sides. Oops, I don't know why I put that little symbol in there. All right, so we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. 3 take away 3 is 0, is 0 greater than negative 1? Okay, hopefully you see that that's still true. So we added 3, it still was true. We subtracted 3, it's still true. Now let's multiply by 3 for the third one. 3 times 3 greater than 2 times 3. Is 9 still greater than 6? That is true. Okay, so we added, we subtracted, we multiplied. Let's now divide. Okay, let's divide. Let me move all of this over. Let's divide now and see if this, this works. 3 divided by 3, is that still greater than 2 divided by 3? Is 1 greater than 2 thirds? Hopefully you realize that that is also true. Okay, let's try two more. So that was the fourth, the fourth thing. Dividing doesn't change anything. All right, let's try two more. Let's try number four, number five here. I'm going to multiply by a negative three. Okay, so I'm going to multiply by negative. Is negative nine greater than negative six? Okay, hopefully you see that that is not true. So here's our first false statement. Okay, we multiplied by negative. And let's look at number six. Sorry, this is a little sloppy. 3 divided by negative 3. Is that greater than 2 divided by negative 3? So that's negative 1. Is that greater than negative 2 thirds? Okay, hopefully you realize that negative 1 is actually smaller than negative 2 thirds. So that one is also false. Okay, so that brings us to rule number 1. If you ever multiply or divide by a negative number, what must you do to your symbol to make it a true statement? Okay, you must switch your sign. So very important here, we need to switch our sign. So let me write this over here, pick a better color to, to view here. When, when you multiply or divide by a negative, you must switch your sign. And we will do some examples that will show you this, but this is very, very important. When you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must switch your sign to make it a true statement. Okay? So let's look at example one. It says solve and graph the inequality. Okay, so we're solving this just like we would a regular Algebra 1 equation. First, I'm going to subtract x. There's multiple steps you can do here. This is my first one. So 10 is greater than or equal to 3x. Take away x is 2x. Bring down the minus 4. Okay, now how do I get the 4 on the other side? I would add 4, add 4. 2x is less than or equal to 14. Divide by 2. Is my last step. X is less than or equal to 7. OK, 
Okay, there's the solving. Now we need to draw a graph. So let me draw a line here. All right. So how do we how do we um, how do we graph this? This is going way back to probably algebra one, maybe a little bit in algebra two. Okay. So first, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a tick mark with zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Negative one. I always go to a couple at least on the negative. Now, we have to remember we have open circles and we have closed circles. Open circles are greater than or less than. Closed circles have the lines underneath them for the equal to's. So this one is a less than or equal to symbol. So I need a, I actually need a closed circle. And I always put it above. Okay, closed circle at seven. And then read, read what it says. It says X is less than or equal to seven. So where are numbers that are smaller than seven? Hopefully you realize that those are to the left. Okay, so numbers to the left of seven are less than or equal to seven. Okay, so that's example number one. Example two, same similar, same similar thing. We want to solve for X. So how do I get rid of division by five? I need to multiply both sides by five. 5 or 5 cancels. I'm left with 8 minus 2x is greater than 30. Okay, now what? Uh, I need to subtract 8. 8s go away. Negative 2x is greater than 30. Take away 8, which is 22. Divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. Negative 2 over negative 2 cancels. x is now. We divided by a negative, so I have to flip my sign. 22 divided by negative 2 is negative 11. So x is less than negative 11. Okay. So let me get a line again for our, our number line. And now we're going to graph this one. So I'm going to put 0 off to the right here because I know I have to go with negative 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. Now we're going to put my circles. It says less than negative 11 so it's just an open circle at negative 11 this time and it says where are numbers that are less than negative 11 numbers smaller than negative 11 are to the left are to the left negative 12 negative 13 negative 14 are less than negative 11. okay next one this one says just graph the inequality and if you notice this says a double inequality there are two inequality symbols okay so let's graph this one not, not too hard. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to put 0 in the middle. I have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, this is 5, 4, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Just put a couple numbers on there so I know that you know where they're at. All right, so let's focus here. Let's see. We hit, it's, we've, on the 4, we have a less than or equal to. So it's a closed circle of 4. On the three, it's just a greater. Neg on the negative three, it's just a greater than symbol, so it's an open circle at negative three. Okay, so now let's read. You always read from the variable out. So the first one says x is less than or equal to four. So numbers less than four are to the left. And then you do the other one. So we have two separate inequalities here. Okay, so you do each one separately. Then the left one says x is greater than negative 3. So if this is negative 3, where number is greater than negative 3, those are to the right. So they are actually pointing in towards each other. So you can graph two inequalities in one, in one problem. All right, so absolute value. Next part, second part. Absolute value equals the distance a number is from 0 on the number line. So the question is, what this is asking as far as, how far is negative 6 away from 0? It says absolute value of negative 6. So how far is negative 6 away from 0? It is 6 units away. Okay. Absolute values are always positive. Now, the second one is saying absolute value 17. That says how far is 17 away from 0? 17 is 17 units away from 0. Now, we might get something that looks similar to this. Okay, what does this want to know? This wants to know, what does x equal 
that will give you an absolute value of 7. Okay, so this is saying what numbers are... Oops. This is saying what numbers are 7 away from 0 on the number line. Okay, hopefully you realize that this would be a true statement. 7 is 7 away from 7. And negative 7 would also be a true statement. So every absolute value problem has how many answers? Two answers. The positive version and the negative version. Okay, so that will help us in our next, our next three examples. All right, so this one says the absolute value of x minus 5 is equal to 3. Okay, so when we're doing these problems, you have to remember that there are two solutions, the negative solution and the positive solution. The first part problem and the second problem we're going to do separately. The first one is you just leave everything alone and you just remove the absolute value bars. And the second problem, you take off the absolute value bars and you change the 3 to a negative 3. Because I have to do the positive 3 version and the negative 3 version for both of my absolute values. So each of these are very simple problems to solve. The first one we just add 5. So x is equal to 8. The second one, we do the same thing. We add 5. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Okay. So what does this show us? Okay, let's think about this. I'm putting 5 in the middle because that's my number inside my absolute value bars. And wouldn't you agree that 8 and 2 are both three units away from five. That's what it's telling us. It wants to know what number for x is three away from the number five. Okay. All right. So now let's look at now. So if it's an equal sign, all you have to do is change the second problem to a negative and solve it. Now, what happens if they give you something very similar, but instead of an equal sign, they give you an absolute or an inequality symbol? Okay. So we still have two problems. The first problem is always just leave everything the way it looks and just get rid of the absolute value bars. The second problem now, we have to change that 2 to a negative 2, but what do you think we have to do to our symbol? Okay, hopefully it makes some sense that when you make it a negative, you have to switch your symbol, just like we did in the, in the first rule that we learned. All right, so part A, we are going to solve each of these. We're going to subtract 3. X is greater than negative 1. And the second one is subtract 3, subtract 3, and x is less than negative 5. So there are, two, there are two solutions to this absolute value. Okay, let's do one more absolute value. I'm going to actually add a bar below this one. I'm going to add the bar, so less than or equal to, just to show you that nothing changes. You're just adding a symbol. Okay, all right, so we have two, two problems. First problem, x minus 1 is less than or equal to 2. And the second problem is x minus 1 is switch your sign and change the 2 to a negative. Okay, so first one I'm going to add 1, add 1. x is less than or equal to 3. There's one answer. And I add 1, add 1. And this one is x is greater than or equal to negative 2 plus 1 is negative one. Okay, so that one also has two answers. So that is the very first section. That is a review of inequalities and absolute value inequalities. Hopefully that makes some sense. We'll make sure we review tomorrow. Have a good night and I'll see you in class.